Hey, what's up, guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we're going to talk about stripes. Dots. We're, we're going to talk about dots. Okay, so first of all, I apologize if you guys hear any thunder or rain. I know, it's a big shocker for Tampa. That pun was not intended. All right, so we're going to make this glitchy dot LED grid thing. Yeah. And while it's a really simple setup, there's some pretty advanced things you can do with it. So first let's take a look at how it's built. First I'm going to turn off this glow layer. Then I'm going to turn off the actual grid layer that's making this thing. So the first layer above our intro is a shape layer set to be an adjustment layer. Hashtag no solids. And on that layer we have mosaic. You can see since the numbers are red we have an expression set and I'll show you that in a minute. So then above that we have a grid and it's set to silhouette alpha. So where all of our grid lines are there is no image, which leaves us with the squares in between. So while you can do this with like ball action or something like that, this will get you squares. It's kind of important too that I think ball action will actually give you the circle starting right in the corner. But since the grid starts with the line on the edge too, it kind of pushes the ball in a little bit, which is important because that makes it center up within our mosaic. So on this grid, we have it set to size from the width slider and our width is set to 20. And then if we go into our mosaic here real quick, I'm gonna hit UU, I'm gonna look at my properties right here. So in this expression, I went to this grid layer, I hit E, and I pulled down grid right here, and then I scrolled back down here, and I typed in this comp dot width divided by, and then I took my pick whip, and I picked the width value right here. And that was it for that property. So then vertical blocks is the same thing, except for instead of this comp dot width, it's this comp dot height. So since these are set the exact same way, our blocks are lined up with the grid. So then to control the size of these things, you just change the border here. What it seems like if you want to get an exact pixel size is you take the width and you add one to it. So pretend this is 21, then you subtract 14. So these should all be seven pixels. That's what it seemed to work out with the first time I tried it. So your mileage may vary, but I think that's correct. So if you needed to be precise for some reason, test it out. The other thing is how did I arrive at this 20 value? Well, in this case, I'm using a 1920 by 1080 comp. And the simplest way to find out a square is if you know what the actual ratio of your comp is, like if you know it's 16 by nine, you can take the width and divide it by 16 or the height and divide it by nine and you'll get a value. In this case, it's 120. And then you can divide that value by pretty much any even number and then you get a size of square that'll actually fit your comp edge to edge. So in this case, that ends up being 96 blocks of 20 by 54 blocks of 20. So now you can pretty much throw anything under here and it'll get pixelated like this and you're all set. So if you wanna take this further, you can do something like this with fractal noise. And this fractal noise layer has levels on it so that we can control how many dots we get. You can also use contrast and brightness in the fractal noise effect, but that's not enough to control it easily. And there's actually a combination of things going on here, so let me show you how it works. So at the top here, I have a layer with displacement on it, and it's set to be an adjustment layer. And then I have the mat that's under that, and the mat looks like this. And then basically, we're using the same type of mosaic setup that we had before. This time, it's over the top of a fractal noise layer that has an expression on evolution, which is just time times 100. It's got some pretty good contrast and that's about it. So then the mosaic is on top of that, but it also has posterize set to 10. You can set this to pretty much any value that you want, but keep note of it because it's important. So we're gonna go back into our other comp. So in the displacement, you see they have that matte layer selected. And then I'm just using luminance. And here's the important part. That posterize thing is kind of like what we did in the ASCII tutorial. So we're taking that number of 10 and we're subtracting one to make it nine. And that's because middle gray has no movement whatsoever. So we take that number nine and then we multiply it by the size of our blocks. So that gives us 180. So the max horizontal and vertical displacement I set to 180. So like I said, since it's posterized, these values can only be like 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, and then negative directions for darker values. So it basically makes sure that they stay in a grid. And then the other thing I did was on this fractal noise layer, which is set to be a luma mat for this color layer below it. Because if we want to put this over anything, we'd get black pixels where there wasn't yellow. So by using it as a luma mat, we get yellow pixels where there's white pixels in the noise. I have an expression on its evolution. And this one's kind of interesting. I'm just going to read it through real quick and then explain what it does. So it's T equals math.floor and then open paren time divided by this comp dot frame duration divided by three close paren semicolon and then T times 20 semicolon. So time divided by this comp dot frame duration gives us the frame number. So right now we're at zero. And then this division by three basically means that it's only going to change every three frames because we're flooring the value. 
I think you can also use modulo three without the math dot four if you wanted to. And so then on every third frame, we're gonna multiply it by 20. So if we go one, two, three, you can see it's 20. One, two, three, it's 40. It's not multiplying by the frame number, it's multiplying by the step. So at six frames, we're two steps in, which gives us 40. If you turn this off, it'll still get the motion from the displacement. So it still has some kind of life to it. This makes it just a little bit more funky. And you can play with how much it evolves each step so that it can be crazier or whatever you want. You can turn this off entirely. You can set this back to 20 like I had it. And you can go up here and turn the displacement off if you want. And it'll kind of still evolve, but it will pause in between. So there's a bunch of different things there you can play with. And then I just wanted to show you some other cool stuff you can do with it. You can use displacement maps like this one from JS Placement. I'll leave a link to that program down below. It's free, but you can tip the developer. It's pretty awesome. And you can throw some text under there. If you put your text under it and you make sure you line up kind of the bars of the text, kind of where the dot grid is, and then use maybe like your tracking to expand them out so that it kind of fits it better. You can kind of get it something that you can read. You can play with text animators to have these things go crazy. And you can also use something like that displacement to move things around. If you want to get that kind of LED look, you can add glow to it. So let's see what the displacement looks like on this. You can just grab these two, go in here. Now this one's actually set to a 15 grid. So it's going to be a little different when we put it on there. That's kind of neat. It's just displacing with itself because when you copy it over, it doesn't keep the link. I'm going to go into the dot mat real quick. Set this mosaic. I just hard coded the values in here before because I didn't have that grid layer. Let's make it 15 by 15. Then we'll go back in here, click on the displacement. And then set this to 15 times 9, which is 135, 135. And there you go. I'm not really sure what's going on here. I don't know if it's just the way something, the edge is moving or something, but. See, that's what it looks like. And if you want to, you can actually keyframe these values so you can get it kind of back to where it was. But anyway, play around with it and always remember to try something different because you never know what cool stuff you might stumble upon. All right, guys, as always, if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you feel like helping to support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Make sure you keep up with the blog at workbench.tv. And as always, I am Joe, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.